Listener Production. The creators of this podcast would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which it is recorded. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are the first storytellers of this land. We pay respect to their elders, past, present and emerging, as well as any Indigenous people who may be listening today. Everyone relax. This is Tofop. I'm Charlie Clawson. I'm Will Anderson. Hello and thank you for watching. I'm not running a backup. I just realised. Oh, me neither. I just realised that as well, well when you said it. <laughs> as long as you weren't running one. So I'm also now going to run one. Uh, I had it already and set up. I just hadn't pressed a little button. So we're both recording from about the same amount of time. Yeah. That's the good you news. You just missed the intro. You've heard it a hundred times before. Uh, but also, like, if, if something went wrong, they could just take the intro from another episode and, like, you know, I mean, people know what the intro is, but it's also the same intro every week so they could just splice it in yeah and nobody would really know hey this is a, a good uh, time to bring up a discussion mm. i've been having with um uh, our corporate overlords at listener oh yeah <laughs> something i'll bring you in on uh, uh it's a discussion <laughs> by the way that's a real insight into our dynamic <laughs> charlie has the conversations with the corporate overlords and then eventually if i need to hear about it he brings it up on the podcast yeah. <laughs> if i think it's going to be good content in fact you know uh uh, uh mike the third our, our, our third producer mm. named mike yes. um we were having a discussion about like you know they want to help grow the show and marketing and all this kind of stuff and he said you know we've got some ideas about things you can do on this show and, and totally understand like you know if, if it's not uh, what you want to do and you know we're going to put it and I said no it's fine you can bring up any idea you want but you know that we're going to talk about it on the show and we may mock you and the idea and he said yep we understand that he said I spoke to the marketing <laughs> team I said they're a different breed like they we can put for you know our secret sounds or whatever the fuck we want to do but we're going we, there is a chance we may mock them um, but another discussion that was had was around mm. intro music and intros and this idea that, like, you know, we have the Dixie warning and then we have, like, the music and all that kind of stuff. And two guys, one cup, we have, like, a full song that we recorded. And this idea being, like, you know, people just want to get to the action, just people want to get to the juice. And I, and I took that on board and I was like, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. People just want to get to the pods. But then I started, like, thinking about my own podcast habits and I genuinely enjoy listening to the intro song of podcasts. Like, I get kind of – a little bit of a kind of like endorphin release or something from when I when I hear the opening music of one of my favorite podcasts. What what's your vibe on the on the intro? It's interesting, isn't it? So I'm going to use the television example. So if a podcast has an intro, I'm not a skipper. Like the thing that I always say about introductions is this: you can, there's a skip function on your like whatever you're listening to it on. Chances are that you can skip through it if you're really annoyed by it, but. I quite like the introductions as well in a general sense, particularly because most of the podcasts I talk to, talk, like that I listen to, there's not much difference between the way they talk on the podcast and the way they talk in the introduction. Yeah, like yeah. it's pretty much the same. Like the introduction may as well be the podcast for most of the ones that I listen to, you know. I'm like, I just like hearing you talk. If it's plugging your gigs or telling you me what's on today's show, I'm still interested in hearing you talk. But TV shows, I think, is a better example because most of the streamers now have the option to skip the intro. And I'm about 50-50. So if if the TV show has a good introduction, like Succession, mm. I always like to listen to the music at the start because it feels like it prepares you good beat. for the episode. Yeah. You just don't want to go from your – like I don't want to be like you know putting in a load of washing and folding it on the couch after just having fed the dog and then suddenly I'm in some like – just leapt into some family battle. Yeah. I need a bit of introduction High stakes music family to battle, set, yeah. <laughs> set the scene, you know, yeah. like for that occasion. And I, I feel I'm the same with Taskmaster. I feel like the Taskmaster music perfectly sets the tone for the show that I'm about to see. It's like a reset that gets me into the world and into the universe. So I, I, I think if it, for me, if the intro serves the rest of the podcast i have no problem with how long it is it's only if it's counter instinctual to the rest of the show well what do you think about so like two guys one cup intro so mm. for people who haven't listened to our afl jason podcast what we've done is created like a a mock club song uh for our show it's Flags in one hundred 
Because in club songs, you know, they tend to talk about how great they are, how hard they chase the ball, the things that they do to the opposition. So in our intro, we talk about how we don't really know what we're talking about and it's heart-baked yeah. ideas, blah, blah, blah. And to me, it was always like, oh, that's a sitcom intro. Mm. Remember back when sitcoms yeah. would lay out, let's tell you the plot of the story. He's adopted two kids and they're living in Manhattan, <laughs> you know. Like, yeah. He was playing basketball and he got in a fight yeah. and he moved to Beverly Hills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is a story about a man named Jed. He was a poor mountaineer, but he kept his family fed. That's what we know about Jed. But then one day, he was searching for some food, and up from the ground came some bubbling crude oil. That Cause, is because my fear with if we if we um, mm. we abridge uh, the two guys one cup intro, and I think it's actually already happening, even without our say so. Like I, I, I had someone say, "Hey, what happened to the intro song?" Is that it's like. There's a danger that people might listen to it and go, oh, this is a football podcast. These guys might right. not know what they're talking about. I mean, Whereas- not much of a danger after the yeah. first 30 seconds of us actually talking, but <laughs> okay. yes, I understand the point that you're trying to make. No, I get that. I think there is – I mean, I know there was some talk around the fact because on that podcast we always – I always say what the date is, like at the start of it, and there was some talk, I think, about taking that out so that it felt a little more timeless. But my problem with that is that – because we recorded a couple of days before it goes out, so much changes in the football world in that time that it can seem really out of date if we haven't timestamped when we recorded it. But secondly, we've had a few times where other football-related comedy shows have ended up doing similar sort of jokes to us that we've done on the podcast that I always feel like the date stamp at least goes, this is the day we recorded this. So if you're seeing this on a show that is four days after we recorded this, you know at least – we thought of that dumb joke first. <laughs> We're not suggesting they ripped it off. I just want you to know that we thought of the dumb joke first. Uh, well, enough of our production meetings on air. Um, mm. We mentioned last week that, you know, I'm sort of getting uh, reframed in the eyes of casting agents as the villain, you know, now that I'm a, mm-hmm. a straight middle-aged white I guy. I like it. Yeah. You know, in the same way that Middle Eastern actors have to deal with this after 9-11, mm-hmm. I am now – in the in a world of like uh, like the manosphere, I am now uh, I am now everyone's favorite villain, and I realized that maybe <laughs> maybe these assertions aren't that far off the mark, because I was out with um, Iona. Jen uh, is back now, thankfully, but uh, she only got back on the weekend, and um, I was out with Iona at our local pub, and uh, I was getting Iona a juice box and I was getting myself a skewy. Uh, it's a schooner for anyone who uh, lives outside of New South Wales. Do they have the schooners in? They don't have to do it in Victoria, do they? Do the schooners in I Adelaide? I mean, there used to be a real state by state, like, you know, Pots, demarcation schooners. when it yeah. came to alcohol serving sizes. But I feel like as as the borders have been crossed more by people, it feels like pubs have incorporated every, is that what you're saying? <laughs> every <laughs> measurement of drink that you can get is now available. Like it's not a foreign language anymore. The it's new not world like, order. Is that, that's what you're saying. I'm getting it, Will. I know what it's you're saying. Not, it's not like the rail gauges anymore <laughs> where they had to change them at the state borders. I believe you can now get a schooner in a Victorian pub. But, but you're right. It, schooner is like, for me, when I first moved to New South Wales from Victoria, schooner was like a foreign piece of language yeah we, we grew up drinking like a smaller size drink anyway that's mm. not the discussion we're having the discussion is that i ordered a schooner now when i was a kid i had very fond memories of when my mm. father would come home from work and um he would crack a long neck and he would pour himself mm. a glass of beer he would sit me on his lap and let me sip the foam off his yeah. beer right oh yeah and so okay. <laughs> i get my schooner <laughs> and i'm like oh he's a good like daddy daughter bonding moment i said oh, yeah. Yeah, do you want to sip the foam off my beer and what? She's like, yeah and so i picked her up and she sipped the foam off my beer and then i turned around and i swear to god the entire bar was staring at me <laughs> like yeah what the fuck are because you because you're like one of those horrible people on instagram <laughs> who makes their two-year-old vape yeah. like <laughs> You're a monster. You're a news.com.au story. But then I was like, I felt like, oh, okay, cool. So, you know, obviously, you know, mm-hmm. put the drink down and, and didn't give her any more. And then I was thinking about it. I was like, I, like in my head, and like had Mandela affected it. I was like, oh, no, but there's no alcohol in foam. Like foam is the non-alcoholic <laughs> part of the beer. Like that was just a fact that came to my mind. And and 
My sister, <laughs> no alcohol in foam. <laughs> no, like I'm not saying this is true. I'm saying no, this is it's like, not true. How could you possibly think that was true? Potentially, because my father had the same conversation with my outraged mother, like but what forty do you think years the ago. Foam is made of the foam is just overly carbonated beer. Will I'm not saying like it's a, a rational thought or a do you think there's logical. no milk in the foam in the top of a cappuccino? Like it's made of the same stuff. <laughs> So my sister came to stay to help to help uh-huh. me out, to lend a hand. And I was yeah. telling her, I was like, I said, do you remember when we were kids and dad mm. used to, you know, let us sip the foam out? And she's like, oh, yeah. And I said, yeah. I did that with Iona. And she's like, you fucking what? You can't do that. And I'm like, well, I didn't. I didn't mean to. Like, it was just, a, I thought it was a cute father-daughter moment. It was like something, you know, that we used to do with that. She's like, you can't. Like, there's, there's alcohol in the foam. I'm like, are you sure about that? Because <laughs> for some reason, I'm, I'd rationalize in my mind that there's no alcohol in foam. She's like, it's part of the same drink. What are you talking about? Yes. So She's so, making very similar arguments to the ones that I immediately made because it's obvious. <laughs> so I was talking to a couple of mates who are also dads uh-huh. and, and running them through mm. what I'd done. And they're like, oh, yeah, like, no, you, 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 you can't no. do that. And, and one of the dads said, I actually had a similar issue with um, my daughter because she saw daddy drinking a beer and she was like, oh, I want to drink that. And so- I let her have a sip and the taste was so repulsive to her. She's like, oh, yuck, daddy's drink, no good. And so that's kind of cured her. And I was like, okay, <laughs> well, that's my next step. <laughs> so I let Iona take a sip of my next beer. Turns out she loves it. Well, loves she it. fucking well, loves it. She got she got a taste from that foam. <laughs> yeah. You gave her the you gave her the baby chino version of it first before she moved up to the real thing. <laughs> I'm screwed. I didn't know what to do. Like it's like, I'm, am I creating? Like, is this the is this? I the, mean, the f- maybe there should be a thing like when you can go to a cafe and the kids <laughs> can get a baby chino, which is just the foam, none of the coffee. Yeah. Is there equivalent at the pub where you go in for a schooner and she just gets a little? Like, you know, Billy Brownless, the AFL, like, this has really turned into our AFL football <laughs> podcast, and I know this is Tofop, but he refers to uh, beers as frothies. Frothies, frothies But mate. maybe there should be a, a product for juniors yeah. that is just all froth that you can take your kid down to the pub and they can have a little frothy. Do they still make, and this is what they were called, fags, the, the lolly cigarettes? Fads. They're now fads. They're fad. called fads. Okay. They were now. fags, and then they're fads. Do they still yes. make those? Are I they- believe so, but I think the latest thing they did was they took the red burning end off them. Okay. So now they're pretty much a just musk white stick. sticks. Um, white musk <laughs> stick. <laughs> As they should all have been. What about Big Boss Cigars? Have you seen one of those? Don't think – well, I haven't seen one for a while. I don't know. I mean, I've never been to a Big Boss Cigar lounge. Maybe there's still some places <laughs> where you can get one. I've never seen a sporting team celebrate after winning a championship by handing around some Big Boss Cigars. Are they going to bring out some, like, musk versions of vapes? Like, can you get some, like, lolly oh, vapes? Yeah. Yeah, lolly vapes for kids. <laughs> well, I mean, vapes, vapes are already yeah, for kids. Like, for kids. That's they're all lolly flavors for that reason. So, what do you reckon? You know, I do now. Like, do, uh, so Iona is not like a um, she's not like a uh, uh, like a, a bratty kid or a kid who gets you know. She, no. We we give her treats. Well, from time she to might time. be now that she's a drunk. Well, this is the thing. Like, what do I? How can I? What is the best strategy for it? Is like. Do I have to just now not drink around her so she doesn't ever see it? I mean, that's something I don't drink that much. So it is possible that I could, you know, avoid drinking in front of her so she forgets about it. Because that's the other thing is three-year-olds move on very quickly. At the moment, it's just yeah. she's all about the beer, man. <laughs> she, she, she wants to She wants to blow the top off a couple, a couple of froffies after a hard day's daycare. She wants to kick back, you know, just pop the lid and a couple of froffies. <laughs> um, I, I Look, I mean, there is a point isn't there where you don't want to make alcohol so taboo that it is enticing because it is taboo. But I do think that, I I mean, personally, that is the moment where I'd be like, you know what, I'm going to at least have a break where she doesn't see me drinking for a while because I'd like, because like you said, it doesn't take her very long to move on. Yeah. So it's not like you have to commit to, I'm never drinking in front of her again. You just need to get to that period where she's distracted by something else. Yeah, she just sees me in the backyard just pounding the vape. (laughs) She's like, oh, (laughs) that looks fun. I don't know what I want to do next. Daddy, you smell like bubble gum. This is great. (laughs) I saw Daddy with a hypodermic needle and a rope in the backyard around right his arm. Oh, I was just exercising. Yeah, yeah, just exercising. Um, I had a massive week last week mm. and um, a lot of uh, carrying furniture and moving shit around and just like moving the house around. It was a pain in the ass. 
And I thought I'd reward myself um, with a massage. I was like, that's my little goal at the end of the week is I'll just go get like a massage. And um, you've always got sort of two options when it comes to massage, which is like you pay like top dollar and go get like a proper remedial massage mm-hmm. or you pay like half of that and go to a Thai place and hope mm-hmm. that the person, you know. I wasn't looking for anyone to fix me. I just wanted to like just relax and just like yeah. not be stressed for, for an hour. Just on a quick side note, yeah. I was in Dar- Darwin a couple of weeks ago doing my show and I was staying in a hotel that was quite next to the venue that I was playing, the Darwin Entertainment Center. And uh, I just went out for a walk around the local area. It was too hot to go too far away from where I was. And uh, so I just like walked the streets and I was obviously in the area of town where- Hang on, sorry. I, when you I, say it was too hot to go too far, as in- what, you might dehydrate and not be able to return back to the hotel? I mean, it was probably 38 degrees or something. Right. So, okay. like, you it was one of those things. Shade and yeah, you wanted to, yeah, you didn't want to go, like, for a big walk down by, like, you know, the coast or whatever. You just needed to be in a place where you could stop, get a drink, you know, have yeah. a relax, pop into the Coles shopping centre for some air conditioning <laughs> every now and again, you know, that sort of thing. How many people uh, are wearing shoes in that Coles? I mean, not a lot of people were. I think I was, because I was wearing pants for some reason, which like was getting me a lot of looks. <laughs> yeah. Like people just More than like, the people well, staring at me giving my daughter a glass of beer at the pub, probably. Yeah, like, honestly, there was people just going, there's a lot of people giving their kids glasses of beer at the pub up there. <laughs> <laughs> that was normal. <laughs> you, you would have fit in perfectly up there doing that. <laughs> there was kids actually in a shout with blokes in the TOB at the pubs up there. So. There's one Mamalti. <laughs> Drinks are on me, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> so um i the area i was in was just the massage place after massage place after massage place and the implication that i got was that it would have been very hard to discern which ones were legitimate massage places and which ones were like happy ending style massage places like i imagine that some of them were legitimate but if you'd asked me, like, of these 12 that you've seen, like, would you be confident to walk into one of them knowing, like, do you know, like, for me, it's if they have, like, like a certificate or maybe they've got, like, some sports, like, things listed in the or window. They, but even they offer, that isn't. They offer rebates. The ones that offer health rebates oh, yeah. to your private health fund, I'm like, well, mm. they're registered, right? So, yeah. <laughs> like, they're not worried about some kind of, like, raid or anything like that. Like, they've got their details registered with a with a, with a peak sort of health body. <laughs> yeah. We offer a rebate and some of them offer a master rebate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've heard of high caps. What about some high fats? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, – it, it, I know I've just been on the Gold Coast the last few days and that's similar. Like there's so many strip malls where you're like, this is an odd place just to put a massage, like a massage joint. Like why – there's nothing else around here. Like you're next to like a pool supply center and something else. <laughs> like I don't know. I just feel like you want to put your – your place of business, your uh, your massage therapy business, somewhere that's a bit more conducive to legitimate <laughs> trade rather than well, this was some guy inter- on his lunch break who doesn't this want to be seen the in the same suburb he lives Interesting in. thing about this suburb is it's like very close to the city. Like, you know, we're talking two blocks away from okay. like what you consider the main part of the city. So in a way, yeah, there was part of me that was going – like either people are incredibly stressed up here and there are 12 legitimate like massage businesses or people are just pretty keen to be like at Coles and then get a hand job <laughs> within like 50 metres walk. Well, I imagine there are a lot of stressed people in the Northern Territory because there's probably warrants out for 90% of the population <laughs> so constantly looking over their shoulder. A lot of them are under assumed identities, you know. I'm so. just very tight in my neck from constantly looking <laughs> over my shoulder. I've got a lump. So I went to uh, I, I went the cheap option, uh-huh. and it was it was it was fine. It wasn't great, but as the masseuse was sort of massaging me, I was sitting there going like, "This is so mediocre. I reckon I could do this." And then I'm like, "How many professions are there? Like specialist professions? Do I think like if I had to, you know, catch me if you can, Frank Abernathy style." pretend to be a specialist profession for a week like what could i get away with like what and so i guess like you know the 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 framing of the question is like what is a specialist profession so i'm thinking something in which you require a qualification to do like some kind of training or qualification 
Well, you know that I'm a qualified masseuse, right? That you like did that I, as part of your Triple J? Was that the, yeah, yeah, I yeah. did a course and got a qualification. Like it took two days. Right. Essentially two days of training. And at the end of that, like I think I could still – like I, I, if, if somebody would come to me and they wouldn't be like, that's the best massage I've ever had in my entire life. But I think that if you walked away, they wouldn't go, that's a guy who – like is impersonating a masseuse. They just go, okay, yeah, that was a masseuse. They might not have been the best massage I've ever had in my life, but I think I would be able to do a competent Me too. impersonation of a – like uh, it would be – I'd be able to get away with it. And I think that you, with a day's training, probably even half a day's training, would be able to learn enough to get away with it. No, let's let's merge like one of our favourites, Quantum Leap. Okay. Merge quantum oh, okay. leap, but the idea is <laughs> uh-huh. not that you have the physique. So just say you get put into the body of a supermodel, like mm. it's still you. So we're gonna we're gonna mix the quantum leap formula. But you just get, or oh, it's I don't know, thank God you're here is more what it is. Okay, yeah, it's quantum. Thank God you're here. <laughs> yeah, <thank laughs> God you're, what a great thank concept, God you leap. by the way. <laughs> like the idea that somebody just pops like into another part of time, and then they just turn to them and say, "Thank God you're here." <laughs> <laughs> So it's you and it's yeah. you with your physical capabilities uh-huh. and stuff. You don't you don't adopt the the, the physique of the person. The strength or the physique or the no, skills of the person. No right. qualifications. So mm-hmm. like I think the masseuse thing, if I suddenly quantum leaped and yeah. I'm standing over someone, I reckon and you've got to get away with it for a week. Mm. So let's say in the course Well, of- I think it's easier to here's what I will say. I think it's easier to pretend to do something that you've had done to you. So a massage, for example, I think because you've had it done to you, you could like you could approximate at least the idea of how it's all meant to play out. Like at least the stuff that happens in the room. Like yeah. once you went out the door, like once you took the towels out the door, you'd be fucked. Because yeah, you're yeah. like, I don't know where the laundry is. Yeah, I'm yeah. not really sure what you're meant to do in this situation. Am I meant to wash the towels you myself? Know, is there a basket? Whatever. But in the room where you've already been, I think you could fake that. Yeah. I think though where you might get tripped up is if someone comes in and they want hot stone mm. therapy. Because mm. I'm like, I've had that done, yeah. but I don't know how hot to get this. I don't know how they no. heat the stones. I don't know how hot to get the stones. Like I don't know all that kind of stuff. All right, here's another profession. I've actually made a list of things <laughs> that if I got mm. quantum leaped into. I think in that situation, you would just be like, oh, sorry, I'd love to give you the hot stone therapy, but the thing we heat the stones with is broken today. Yeah. Sorry, I'm really sorry about well, that. That's all you have to do. So yeah. um, uh, what's the, what, what's his offsider in quantum leap, the guy in the, he can see, the hologram? Oh, Al? Al, Al, that's right, yes. Yeah. So he says, Will, you've got to just lay low for a week. You've just got yep. to do this for a week. You can't get exposed, otherwise you lose. Okay, so masseuse, do you think you could be a psychologist for a week? Yeah, easy. easy. I'm a fucking that's, that's the one that I could do as well. <laughs> All you could do is listen and just ask like questions um, vaguely related to what they've said. And what do you think that means? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Occasionally just take some notes, just write something on a piece of paper and just go, yeah, interesting, yeah. Okay, so what if someone comes to you with like a – like a, 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 a Again, a, I, I, to any psychologists who are out there, I don't think that I could in a long-term sense do the job of a psychologist. No, no, we just have to, to get away actually with it for a week. To get away – can I fake it for a week? Absolutely I can. Yeah, Fun. okay. Are you into it? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. In fact, you just stay, you just quit comedy altogether. <laughs> just stay. Al's like, well, we can get you back to your own time on that. No, no, I'm good. This is fun. The thing I would say about that is that, like the 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 more serious side of the psychologist thing would be if there is one of your patients who is in a truly desperate situation within that week. Because you could fake it with you and I coming in to bitch about being middle aged and not understanding how life works. But if somebody's in a, like a life or death situation, what if someone you could outsource to a colleague? Right, you could do do that thing of just going, you yeah, know, I want to recommend, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what if someone comes into you and they're like? They're suffering from paranoid delusions and they're convinced mm. that no one is who they say they are. <laughs> what are you doing then? I mean, look, dude. I think you're uh, right. I'll, I'll level dude, with you. I'm not even from this I'm timeline. Not, I'm not even a psychologist. <laughs> There's a hologram that only I can see. <laughs> this is a game show, a quantum game show. <laughs> um, okay. Now, this one, I think I would be like, I'd be. By the really, way, I, just on this, because I'm so obsessed by the idea of quantum leap meets Thank God You're Here, yeah. because Working Dog, uh, bring, who are the company that make Thank God You're Here, are bringing it back. Celia Pacola is going to host it, former Fofop guest. Celia Pacola is going to host the new series. Imagine if James Cameron style 
they've had Santo Chilaro and like <laughs> Tom Gleisner working on new tech quantum technology for the very purpose of being able to reboot this show as like a quantum show. And then they just have comedians stepping into this machine and traveling through time. <laughs> That'd be the best. Um, okay. I reckon I could get away working in a barbershop as a hairdresser. Oh, a really? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. It's oh. going to be, I think it's going to be a don't, don't diminished know. returns and the complaints yeah. are going to start piling up. Yeah. But I reckon, like, because um, I think most people are kind of polite and so I think maybe two or three days I'd get away with it. Day four, I reckon the first complaint start in, but I've only got to get to the end of the week. That Thursday, and then I can start doing stuff like that dude who told me he had the shakes. Oh, sorry, man, like I haven't had any lunch yet. You know, they want something really complicated. Otherwise, I'm just doing this. I'm just getting, and again, like Will said about psychology, I'm not uh, disrespecting hairdressers out there. You do it's a, you know it's a specialized yeah, job, right? Like in a long term sense, you, like you have to be good to get people to come back. But yeah. you, like within two weeks, most people aren't coming back for a haircut within two weeks. So that's right. The time, yeah, okay. I, I look, I was a bit skeptical about that, but when you've talked it through like that, I think you could get away with it for two weeks. You've just got to survive for one week. Okay, <laughs> yeah. what about this one? And this is sort of different because I've had you know a bit of exposure, mm. but you're a cop. Suddenly I'm a cop. <sighs> no. You don't think you'd get away with it? No. And the reason being very simple to me is that there's so many like official bits of being a cop that none of us see, like the working in the office part of being a cop. and Using you just, a radio, call signs, all yeah, that kind of stuff. any of that sort of stuff. And you would not know any of that. And you are around people who are trained to look for people. So like when you're at the barbershop or when you're at the like psych- psychologist or the masseuse or whatever, you're not around people whose job it is to be spotting inconsistencies or people not being able to see things. Like if at the barbershop you're doing something a bit differently, maybe they're like, oh, he's trying a new technique or like something like that like it's not like you're gonna go you're gonna call the scissors a banana or something like that whereas like as a cop <laughs> yeah. you know there's it's gonna like be booking terms in for that you don't know 401 and you're like yeah. absolutely yeah. <laughs> and that is a just remind me what that is again the buy him, uh, buy him a pair of levi's now that's yeah. a 501 so <laughs> Is there a highway? We're driving down a highway? But I I mean, I've done a ride along with cops when I was training mm. for Blue Healers. And like they like literally said to me, um, because we went to like the we did all these like um not uh like checkups, you know, went to this mm. all these like this there was a, like a, a um hostel that we had to check do a checkup because there was someone had just been released there and this kind of stuff. And they said to me, just, pre- just, we'll just refer to you as a detective. If anyone asks what you're doing, uh-huh. you're just a detective. So I just hung around these guys as a plain clothes police officer while they went around and you know did all their their checks oh, and stuff. If they were all in on it, if everybody else was in on it, you could get away with it. But the situation where you're having to try to fool them well, as they, well. But if, then, we're, then if, you if you're quantum leaped to them, you are a cop. Yeah, you're a cop, but they're not going to just cover up for the fact that you suddenly don't no, know No, but everything. you could sort of be like, so just say, you know, you quantum leap and you're in the back yep. of a patrol car with two, you know, constables. They're going out yep. to do a checkup and they're like, uh, so Detective O'Malley, because <laughs> you're Irish, clearly, because <laughs> everything's a cliche. Detective O'Malley, um, you know, we're looking for this perp. Uh, we believe that, uh, you know, he was seen along here. We're just going to make some inquiries. And you say, yeah, you guys do that. I'm just going to call the chief. <laughs> Mm. You just get on your phone. <laughs> but uh, how do you know what the chief's number is or what no, the you chief's pretend. name is? Yeah, you don't. Or you I just reckon pretend you... you call the chief. But wouldn't they later, like, there'd be some follow-up to that and they'd, they'd talk to the chief and they'd say, you know, O'Malley called you and the chief would be like, I never got a call from O'Malley. And so that's when you say, look, I don't want to have to bring this up, but this goes above your head. I'm working with IA. And uh, there's some real integrity issues at this station. Internal affairs. Internal affairs. Yeah. Well, you're a bloody rat, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> they like, bash you. Like, they take you into an alleyway. They blue murder me. You, you rat. <laughs> Tie an engine block to my ankles and throw me into the harbour. <laughs> you're dead. Two days in, I mean, you're dead. <laughs> I actually have been. I'm just reading a book at the moment that was all yeah. about um, police corruption in Sydney in the late '90s, early 2000s, and it is astounding the shit the cops were doing back then. Like. I had no idea, and you know, this is someone who worked on, uh, like, on a police show and 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 did some like police training and stuff. But you're a person who's produced copaganda. Yeah, a hundred percent. I am the problem. That's what we said. It's my villain. It's my heel turn. But the amount of kind of drugs and shit that these dudes were taking, like, on their off nights, I just always assumed that. Ah, uh, 
I mean, maybe drug testing. I mean, there was drug testing in the late 90s, but it was just kind of accepted that, yeah, there's like certain, like in all societies, there's a certain segment of the population that like to go out and, and take drugs. And it's no different in the police force. Like everyone would just sort of turn a blind eye. The only time it becomes an issue is if, you know, there's an incident in which the cop's ability to do their job is impaired by the fact that they were out on pills the night before or, or mm, whatever. Mm, mm. But more often than not, like everyone is aware of the fact that this cop is, you know, going out and partying and rubbing shoulders with, you know, underworld figures and stuff. It's just kind of, on one hand, they view it as like, well, it's at least we know, you know, we're not going to, like, we know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He can still do his job. And then if the shit does hit the fan, then we'll just nail him then. But I was always, I don't know, I was just under the assumption that if you're a cop, you, you probably can't do drugs. But apparently, well, this is, you know, at least 20 years ago, apparently that wasn't the case. I mean, poor naive Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I just would have thought to uh, do your job like yeah properly yeah and not abuse the power that you have yeah but yeah it, it, it's it's it, and especially in New South Wales like there's a lot of history of it <laughs> yeah many many inquests the many, way many I inquests. tell you about the New South Wales government it's really going to blow your mind <laughs> <laughs> both sides constantly corrupt. But the, but this this one um, there's one cop in this book that I'm mm. reading like he basically was only a cop for three years and in that time he just treated it like I mean it was like he was a rock star like he had access to you know drugs and power and because all the local businesses wanted to be on the side of the cops they were singing him free drinks and access to private rooms and he was getting the best coke and all this kind of stuff like and and then he like. He like he retires with like a payout, you know, like he gets injured, gets like in some tra- gets traumatized in the job, and now we're yeah. paying for him to like you know his retirement for the next however long he lives, and it's just like that's insane. But it did make me think, well, I could be a cop. I mean, yeah. that sounds like my twenties. That's like, not I a cop. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm cop. They've only got to do it for a week, Will. <laughs> like you've only got to do it for a week. This is what true. I'm saying. It is true. Thank so, God yeah. you leaped. <laughs> I think that I could probably bluff my way through an advertising office in some regard. I could probably be a politician or like some sort of – Public speaker. Yeah. I don't know if I could be a teacher. I feel like kids would be out of my comfort zone. Um, but you've seen that. You've had enough exposure to yeah. teachers that you, you've got just got to fake it. Here's the thing. Well, it like- came to my mind that I could be a teacher, but then I like started to think about the whole interacting with children part of it, and I think that that's where I would fall down because – I have seen people interact with children, but in a general sense, I don't do a lot of interacting with children. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's going to be an issue. Yeah. <laughs> but but then like, again, as far as good, I know. Good thing to say in your job interview <laughs> when you get the job. But what as about- far as I know, there's no alcohol in the frother beer. I was told that <laughs> by a father. So is that right? I can give them the frother beer? Now, at the risk of mm. pissing off the, the dominant section of our audience, yeah. do oh, you doctors. Think- Could I be a doctor? A GP. Not necessarily a surgeon or anything mm. like that, but someone who's the first port of call. Because much like a psychologist, mm. often when I go and see my GP, they just listen to what I say and then they come up with some suggestions. Sometimes they refer me to other specialists, which is, I think, a great out in this situation yeah. where someone comes in and says, oh, I get this weird clicking in my neck. Oh, I'm just going to refer you to we're a gonna physiotherapist. To, we're going to have to do some tests, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do some tests. I'm going to just write you, you know, mm. uh, go see a pathologist. We'll get some blood work done. Mm. Come back in a week. But how would <laughs> come you- Come back in a week and we'll run through your results. How, how would you- oh, But you wouldn't do any of that stuff because I was going to say, how would you contract, like contact the pathologist or take the blood test I mean, or do any of that? But you- well, I'm, look, I, then again, this is one of those things where learned behavior. Mostly we're just doing jobs where we can put stuff off for a week. Is that yeah, what we're saying? Exactly, pretty much. <laughs> You've just got to get away with it for a week. And uh, so I reckon, like, I, well, I, my GP, like, I'll come in and I'll give my ailment. They'll turn, they'll open my file. They'll put mm-hmm. my, you know, details in. That brings up everything. And but so see, then- you wouldn't even know how to do that. That's the problem. Like, you wouldn't know how to bring up someone's file on the computer. I'll call reception. Yeah. I'll say, "Hey, you know, whoever's out there, um, can you just come in for some? My computer's playing up." Mm-hmm. And then I say, "Look, I'm trying to log in, uh, look at the details." And then they show They're me. They're like, "Where's your password? What's your password?" And you're like, <laughs> "Put my don't... coffee in their face and jump out <laughs> through the window." And now I'm stuck in this timeline forever. I fucked up. 
Do you reckon you, you could be a CEO of like a oh, huge, yeah. yep. Absolutely. like one of the, like a Rio Tinto yep. or yep. one of those? Because that's massive- just telling other people to do what they need. Like you know, it's, someone's going to come to you and they go, "We have got a problem with dot 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 dot," and you just go, "Well, what do you reckon, Harry?" Like, who are the best people for us to put on this case? Like, what sort of team do we need to put to – like, I mean, the okay. CEO, like, a lot of it's just, you know, up the top stuff. I think for a week you could be a CEO, yeah. So you reckon – so you're in a board meeting, so you mm. leap into a board meeting. Yeah. And they're saying, look, uh, these are the acquisitions we're going to make. We feel by, you know, buying this company and tearing the guts out of it, we can then, you know, resell it at a profit, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then another guy says, no, that's a disaster. If we do that, you know, we're undervaluing blah, blah. You could just sit there and go, yeah, we just go this way or that way? Yeah, I could because also I don't really care what the consequences are because <laughs> they're going to happen more than a week from now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also one of those things too. It's actually a premise for some kind of like high concept comedy where – with your madcap decisions, you actually yeah. create incredible profits, like you with your left of center <laughs> decisions, just like turn this company around. Well, that yeah, that would be the hope, right? That you just come in and like things go better. But I like, I feel like unless there was some sort of emergency happening at the company, like unless you like you know you're the CEO of a energy company and there's some sort of like big meltdown at a reactor or something like that. If it's just a normal weaker CEO, I think you can get away with it, yeah. What about you leap into an astronaut as a rocket mm. is, like, taking off? <sighs> so they've done all the checks, but now you're just blasting yeah. into outer space. I mean, mm. you've got two other, like, co-pilots on the ship. Maybe yeah. you're, like, the chief botanist or, or whatever. I'm sure they send mm. up, like, scientists and stuff like that. Mm. So do you reckon – I mean, they're doing a week in outer space. Mm. You've just got to survive. Mm. You've got to bluff it for a week in outer space. Am I allowed to – see, what I would do in that scenario, because I clearly can't bluff it. Like, I have no, like – Scientific training. And also, as people famously know, I don't really like outer space movies, <laughs> so I don't even have a lot of movie references that I can use in this situation. But here's what I do know about the idea of, like, rocketing into space and stuff. There's – an assumption that some of that could be traumatic. They train these people in like similar situations to see what effect it has on their human body. I think that's a situation where you could claim some sort of memory loss or lack yeah. of understanding space based on ma- space madness. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you, where you would just say, I have to admit this, <laughs> that I just don't remember how any of this works. Yeah. Like, I, I, just, I love it. They cross to the astronauts in outer space and the other two pilots are talking to like mission control and you're just floating in the background babbling, swiping Whee! at things. Yeah. They're like, what happened to uh, to Anderson Whee! over there? Uh, he doesn't seem to know what's going on. He's having a great time. He's, he seems to have a great time, but he seems to have forgotten everything about Whee! what his job is. Yeah. Because I reckon that's true. It's a highly stressed yeah. situation. People mm. do crack under pressure. You could definitely suddenly just be like, oh, I'm, I've got space madness. I don't oh, know so, what's going well, on. Well, I could just say to them, I don't know what has happened. I just need to be completely honest with you. It's like I can't remember anything that we've <laughs> learned in our training. I feel like my mind is working really rationally. Like yeah. I can talk to you. Like, you know, you can hear me and communicate. I don't feel like I like have gone completely like mad, but I do feel like – I can't remember. it. So if you could just instruct me on what it is I am meant to be doing, I, I think I can still do it. Uh, I think that that would be – they would wonder why that had happened, but I think they would adapt very quickly to that being the reality of the situation and they would just go go up there, flick that, never touch that button. You've yeah. got to – like this is how you go to the <laughs> no, toilet. No, you, We're going to have to teach you how to go to the bu- toilet. <laughs> You're basically Homer Simpson in that instance. You're opening a bag of chips to get to all the Don't instruments. Don't do that again. Yeah. Stop going wee and like <laughs> – Going from side to side. Also, we need to teach you how to use the suction on the toilet. So I wonder in in that mm. so in those circumstances, because it's such an extraordinary circumstance, mm. the the ability for you to fake it, or I mean, you're not really faking it, yeah. is your pleading ignorance or whatever. You have to come up with a plausible excuse why you don't know how to do anything. Yeah. So that's see, when you're a doctor, that's hard to do, right? Yeah. Like to come up with that plausible excuse why you don't know how anything works because. If you start showing those signs, they're going to send you home as a doctor. They're going to say, hang on, well, if you can't log into your thing and you can't remember your password, are you in a fit position to be treating patients at the moment? Whereas, like, you're already up in this rocket. They can't do anything about this. You are either their pet 
or you can learn how to be like, you know, <laughs> you can basically learn how to like help them a little bit. And I think that that's what you try to adapt to do but in what that if situation. You, what if you had to fake it? Like you're not just you're not going to plead ignorance. Like you just will make it easier for you. You are yeah. working in different parts of the space station, okay. so somehow you you survive. So I'm in the lab. Maybe I'm in the like the botanist lab, which is pretty much just me. It's me and the plants. Yeah. So so what they've done is they've um they've been collecting mm. samples yeah. from outer space, and they're in this mm. lab. So you somehow like you've woken up, you've leaped yeah. into the ship as it's going up to the space station. Mm. You've docked. You've sort of adjusted. You're getting used to being in anti uh, you know low gravity. And they say, okay, Anderson, um, the samples are in there. We want your report by the end of the week. Mm, mm, mm. So then you're just in there <laughs> going like, how the fuck do I open this, this canister? <laughs> and you you become the reason that like the next COVID <laughs> may reaches Earth because well, some space bacteria. Here's the first thing that I would not do is open any random canisters in that situation. <laughs> All canisters would remain shut. Reports might be written, but they wouldn't be based on – I wouldn't think that I could fake weight my way through testing alien samples bacteria i would keep all the bacteria all locked up and then i would speculate on what it is that we have yeah. in fact i might blame one of the alien bacteria on my fogginess and not understanding how to do things like i might be like i feel like the exposure to the sample that we took on blah 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 has like you know wiped some of my short-term memory and i can't remember what the lock key like the lock password for the lab is can you remind me I love that your defense mechanism is just like, I don't know. I don't Memory. know. Explaining yeah. why I don't know is my defense mechanism yeah, because every, I don't think situation. that I can lean into faking like a scientific experiment. It's much better for me to lean into faking what the excuse for me not knowing is, surely. I mean, it, it is true. Like I'm thinking now of when I have played like paramedics or whatever and often – um, you know, you'll do your they'll they'll do your coverage where they get the lines that they needed, but then you'll be in a wide shot and they just need you doing some business mm. in the background. But it's not scripted, you know, and whatever. And so you'll have a medical consultant or a nurse on set and you'll say, Hey, like, what would I be doing in this situation? And they'll give you some actions. But very rarely have I ever just come up with that on my own. It's like, oh, okay, this is how you do like, you know, CPR or whatever. Right. Like, it, it's it's kind of hard on the spot, especially if you've just leapt into that moment to go. Oh, I can just fake this. You need a buffer. You need you need like at least what an, a couple of hours to kind of get your head around where you are, what you're doing, who your identity is. I mean, yeah, I'd want at some the very time, least. But, well, you either want some time by yourself to work it out or try to work it out. Or what you need is to be immediately thrust into a situation where there's people around that can help you work it out from context clues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll get that when you look over to your right and see two other people in space. So it's <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like, okay. It's, a, it's happened. As yeah. Charlie foretold on the podcast, <laughs> it's finally happened. Hey, guys, I think I have space madness. I've lost my memory. Can I touch this button? What if you were on stage, mm. like uh, you're at Wembley Stadium okay. in, in front of a rock, you're fronting a rock mm. band, like you get mm. dropped into, mm. I don't know, Imagine Dragons. Yeah. You're the lead singer of Imagine Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> you're playing Wembley Arena. Um, okay. You don't know any of the words of the songs. I mean, I would know um, uh, there was lightning before the thunder. Thunder. <laughs> I don't know any of the other words to that song, though, so I'd be, I'll join you Radio in that bit. Radioactive. 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 <laughs> you just keep repeating those two lines again I'm and again. breathing in the da-da-da, da-da-da-da-da-da. Well, this is the thing. As a rock star, this is why I thought of it, because how many concerts have you been to yeah. where the, the lead singer just puts the microphone out into the crowd? Yeah. You guys know this is- one. You all guys also know this one. And yeah. you guys know this one. And I think you guys will also know this one. <laughs> but you've got to do that for a week. <laughs> so seven dates. You've got to do it over seven dates. Seven different cities. You know this one. I think that between two gigs, I would learn the words. So like first night, yeah, like you're in trouble. I'm in trouble if I'm like suddenly I'm the lead singer of Imagine Dragons and like I can only sing – about like maybe generously one one fifth of radioactive and, and um like maybe one ninth of thunder or whatever that, i don't even know if that's the name of the song so that's it that's all but I. you can know do. what you could do to buy yourself some time yeah is that's the gig you turn mm. into a brian jonestown massacre type thing where oh, yeah. 
you fight with a bass player to yeah. buy yourself some time. Like, and you know, you're going to have an angry audience and stuff because you've stormed off stage yeah. or whatever. But that buys you time to fucking whip out your phone and Google some lyrics <laughs> <laughs> from Matching Dragons. Like, you're going to need to look at the set list and then you're going to need to Google all the lyrics. So, that wouldn't be too hard to do. You could do that in a couple of hours, I reckon. Well, you know what? To be honest, you, you know, you're right. You, you, it only fucks you for one song. Because in that situation, realistically, all you've got to do is get off stage, get your phone. If you say say to the band, I don't know what I'm doing, I can't remember anything. <laughs> I, I don't know what's just happened, but I can't remember any of the lyrics to the songs. So and I'm they're just, like, it's so weird. There's probably an astronaut a couple just, of weeks ago who said the just, same thing. But this would be the most practical thing to do. Uh, Go, yeah. Guys, I don't know what's just happened. Maybe it was all- Lights. Maybe I had too much to drink off stage, but I can't remember any of the lyrics. Like, that's better than arguing with the band and splitting up the band. And so I just go off and I get a phone. All Imagine Dragons like lyrics, lyrics would, would be, be like you know. So like if I just like quickly like because right, right okay hang on radioactive lyrics I'll just like <laughs> like it'll be it'll come up really quickly right so yeah. Like we got I, Spotify. If it's Spotify, they they print yeah, the okay. lyrics like karaoke star. Yeah. Okay. So I'm waking up to ash and dust. I wipe my brow. I sweat my rust. I know how the song goes. So if I knew that had those words in front of me, I think that I could. I, I could sing that. Yeah. So really, all I would need to do is like. I mean, look. Once we got past Radioactive and Thunder, <laughs> which are the two songs that I know how they go, the lyrics wouldn't be as helpful after that because I don't know where the lyrics are meant to be in the songs. Uh, one last profession that I thought of, and I didn't – again, this will be disrespectful, okay. but you're a conductor of like a symphony orchestra. You mm. find yourself at the lectern tapping your thing. Now, look, I'm sure there is a system to how conductors do it, but – They've played this song a zillion times, right? Like the, the the orchestra, they're not waiting. Like you just need to give them a signal and they'll start playing. Like they've got the music in front of them. They're not really following you for changes and stuff, are they? All you're going to do, don't, don't you reckon you could get away with that? Just like, Yeah, but tap, tap, like tap. normally what the conductor's doing is – conducting like so like when the conductor points at the violins that's where the violins come out if suddenly when the violins are meant to play the conductor's pointing at the drums or whatever <laughs> then that is they're gonna you are sending me confusing signals so what i would do is just before, <laughs> let me guess <laughs> just just before we start i say like hey guys i don't know what's <laughs> happened but i can't remember how to be a conductor you all know the song, so I, just so no one notices, I'll wave the thing around. But don't don't wait for me. Like violins, you know when to come in. Like if I'm pointing at the drums, don't be confused by that because like this is just for show. Yeah, there. All right, that works. Um, all right, let's get to some mail and then we'll wrap it up for today. Okay. Um, we had a little a chat about Face Off a little while back. Josh has written in saying, "I work in a job where identifying people is important." Not only the size of their ears, but height compared to your eyes, your lobe connection, your ear angle are all factors in identification. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not literally just what the ears look like. It's where they're positioned on the head. Makes sense. In face-off, they would have to have switched ears also. Nick Cage's ears angle out from his head while Travolta's ears stay close to his head. The movie would be over before it started if they didn't switch ears. And it's even harder when it comes to eyes. There is no changing your eye width. Luckily, Cage and Travolta have similar eye widths uh-huh. or their eyes wouldn't fit in the sockets. Yeah, so you can't get like Joseph Gordon-Levitt and um, Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> Rodney- <laughs> yes, Rodney Dangerfield, you're right. That is Dig the- him up. <laughs> <laughs> the cops of Rodney Dangerfield, you can't face swap them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did you hear they're remaking Face Off with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and the exhumed corpse of Rodney Dangerfield? <laughs> Back to life, uh, they're calling it. Uh, so what do you think Josh does for a living? Mm. I look at a job where identifying people is important. Is he a cop? Sounds like he's a cop. Possibly. I mean, what other job do you need to identify people in? Security, cop? Yeah, I mean, some sort of security, you would imagine, identifying people. Um, This is from James. Mm -hmm. When you guys uh, brought up edging again last Mm -hmm. episode, yeah, we have brought that up. I've noticed it's it's gone into both Two Guys, One Cup and Tofa. Mm -hmm. Um, I won't specify which episode. I assume it'll be irrelevant regardless Mm -hmm. of when you read this. I remi- well, I mean, it's on me- brand if we just keep bringing it up constantly but never complete the bit, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> 
It reminded me to ask if you guys were aware of soaking. Yes. You know what soaking is? So I, I, I must have been on a faux fop then, not a toe fop, because I have spoken about this on the podcast before, which is the Mormon, I believe, belief. Um, there was an episode a while ago where I talked all about soaking, but the idea of soaking is it's not having sex. It, you put your penis inside somebody and then you get a third person to jump up and down on the bed or make movement on the bed. Ah. So that um, so the, the initial bit is the soaking, which is just to put the penis yeah. in the vagina but not move. But the additional bit is that you then get someone else to move the bed. So they might jump on the bed or they might like move the bed itself as long as you're the one who's not creating the the motion or the movement, I believe, okay. is the idea. Well, the movement is not – I because I just went to Urban Dictionary yeah. and, yeah, they're putting the penis in the in – the, in the, I was going to say the cavity, it doesn't sound great. <laughs> Putting a penis inside something and yep. then letting it sit, that is soaking. But I didn't mm. know about bouncing the bed, but they say it's yep. popular with religious students with premarital sex. I mean, as a workaround, if you're worried about angering God, mm. do you think he's going to be fooled by that? God loves a workaround. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love. Like in every religion, there's always like anal isn't sex or like boy yeah. jobs aren't sex or whatever it is. It's like sucking the Dalai Lama's tongue isn't sex. Oh, like God. there's always a workaround of some kind. <laughs> Apparently God, like all knowing, all seeing, but you know what? Loves a loophole. Loves <laughs> some terms and conditions. And so as you mentioned, this is big in Mormonism. Yes. Uh, and do you know which band are Mormons? Uh, Imagine Dragons? No. Imagine um, Dragons. Are they really? They are. Yeah, yeah. Imagine Dragons, Panic at the Disco, and The Killers. I was going to say Mormons The Killers I knew were Mormons, but I didn't know that uh, – oh, well, that, there you go. Do so you think Radioactive is a reference – like is that a, 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 oh, no, Lightning and Thunder would probably be more a reference to soaking. Mm. I put it in you, I let it sit there, I get my <laughs> mates too, jump on the bed, <laughs> and it feels like lightning and the thunder. <laughs> uh, this is from Carly. <laughs> Uh, the heading is, I had a dream about you, but it's yeah. nothing sus. Okay. Hey, Will and Charlie, I had a dream about you, Will. Nothing sus, though. Mm. I was in a house I don't recognize. I was watching a film on a massive TV, but I kept getting interrupted. Then there was a commotion. I checked, and it was you. So I knew who you were. Apparently, you were lost or meeting people in the area. <laughs> Did you quantum leap into this person's house? You're just standing there going, look, guys, I don't know what's happening. But- <laughs> Very confused. I seem to have lost my memory. <laughs> uh, you didn't know. You were apparently lost or meeting people or something. You are very vague about why you turned up at my place. <laughs> I think this is quantum leap. Thank God you leaped. So then uh, I sat down and I started reading your book over <sighs> – over again while talking mm. to you. I'm not sure why. Okay, so she's getting a bit of a plug for okay. I'm not fine, thanks, in this dream. That's good. There were two dogs that were someone else's. No idea mm. where they came from. They kept interrupting what you were talking about. Um, you were talking about something, and I said, yeah, but you have 20-odd years of dirty comedy in your head, so it's easier for you. <laughs> I wouldn't say described as dirty necessarily, parts of it. I mean, um, 20 years of it aren't in my head either. Like, it does kind yeah. of go in and out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike soaking. Uh, you were then asking me lots of questions and wanted to know what I was reading, but I couldn't see the cover mm-hmm. or read the title. I was annoyed again at the interruption, so I closed the book and went back to listening to your rambling and trying to figure out who these dogs belong to. Side note, you sound high on – side note, you sound high on something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but B, I have no idea what what is made easier. C, uh, what is this saying? I'm confused. Mm-hmm. I would listen to you talk and not just phase out mentally. Okay. Sorry, Charlie, you weren't here, but it could be your house or your dogs. Well, I don't have any dogs. So, anyway, it's a weird dogs. Thought. Could be my dogs. Um, yeah, you have dogs. So, it was weird. I, I thought I'd do the typical family thing and share for amusement. What do you think? If I was to interpret that dream, so you were in your house, you hear a commotion, you're watching a massive TV, yeah. and you get interrupted, and there's a famous Australian comedian in there who is confused and babbling. And you sit down and you start reading this comedian's book. You're not sure why, and but you keep getting interrupted. I think that's an anxiety dream, and I think it has something to do with a, a, something that you feel like you need to complete. That has to do with either, I think the the massive TV and the the fact that there's a celebrity in your room. There's something I think that it's something that you're aspiring to do. Maybe there is something you're wishing to complete. It's at a course or a, or a career change or something that you're wanting to do, but you are allowing yourself to be distracted by these minor quibbles. That's my 
read on that. Yeah, I think this might have actually been my dream that she was in because, like, <laughs> really? it basically describes how the book was written. Two dogs, me <laughs> getting distracted by a giant stuff. TV and me never wanting to finish the fucking book. Uh, this is from Malcolm. Hi, Charlie and Will. I'm a consultant psychiatrist. Okay. Yep. I've been listening since the start, and you guys got me through all my specialist training. I now recommend TOEFOP to medical students and junior doctors that I teach. I love this. Like, do we get made part of the curriculum if you go to medical school? I'd like, like something named after us. You know how they'll name it like a disease or like a something yeah. after? Like, I mean. What would it be? I mean. Something inoffensive. Yeah. Like, like we don't like want a, yeah, a non-fatal we... but permanent disease. <laughs> It's like you've got a weird growth. I mean, tofopolitis sounds like oh, yeah. something, right? It does. Like, tofop, I think part of it is that it's always sounded like a medical abbreviation. Like, it doesn't, but if, if we found out it was short for tofopolitis, like if there was like a little just minor thing, oh, you've got a little tofopolitis. Like, mm. Tommy Little at the moment, and he, he won't mind me saying this because he said it on stage last night at his gig, and I think he'll talk about it with people, but he's got. A weird fluid. He, he got a tattoo, and they think maybe it was in a, a like a, a reaction to the fact that he's a bit stressed or whatever. But he woke up with a giant lump over his heart and under his head, but it's all fluid. Oh, and over the last couple of days, it's moved down his body, and now it's like where he's. It looks like he's wearing like a clumps style, like <laughs> fat suit, basically. Like you know, yeah. it's just this fluid that is moving yeah. around. Apparently, not. They can't really explain it. Absolutely nothing to worry about is what the doctors have told him. It'll just naturally go away. I feel like something like that is what tofopolitis. We want something that like is obvious, has some yeah. comedic value, but at the end of the day is like non-lethal. Well, let's throw it open to our medical uh, uh, listening fraternity. Yeah. Whatever your profession, whatever department you work in, can you come up with a definition, a medical definition? So use all your big words that you learn at university, your big heads, <laughs> when you studied your big brains, uh, and come up with a definition for what tofopolitis is. I'd be keen to know. I mean, that'd be um, great in our quantum leap scenario if we were a GP. Yeah. Oh, I, I think you've got tofopolitis. That's <laughs> what just, that is. We use, we, we use our quantum leap week just to promote the show. <laughs> you, you need a dose of laughs. laughs. I got the podcast for you. Uh, he continues, Charlie, psychiatrists can't diagnose someone without formally assessing them. However, having listened to every episode of TOEFOP, many of them twice, I'm going to give it a go awesome. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and most of FOFOP, I believe that E, the registered psychiatric nurse who wrote in a couple of weeks ago, is on the money. You are unlikely to have a diagnosis of ADHD. If you do decide to go ahead with the appointment with a psychiatrist, make sure to tell them at the end, that they should be ashamed of themselves for charging $400 to one of the two creative geniuses who created Australia's number one medical podcast. Uh, thanks for everything. You guys are brilliant. Um, you know, this is uh, many uh, psych, psych, people who are in the psychiatric field have contacted me since the discussion around ADHD to support the claim that I am probably unlikely suffering from adult ADHD, uh, particularly as it doesn't seem to impact my, uh, my life in, in any negative ways. Um, so I have uh, cancelled my ADHD uh, diagnosis appointment. Um, I feel like uh, I, I'm currently seeing a therapist about anxiety anyway. Mm -hmm. And so if I if that can lead me to any greater insights uh, and, and saves me having to spend an extra four hundred bucks, <laughs> yeah, there's also that. Then I'll be I'll be okay with that. Uh, last bit of mail here, Will. This is from uh, Samantha. Uh, who says, I've been listening to the pod for about six months and started at the beginning of the bin saga. So I'm now at episode 316, and I love that this is still a regular topic for discussion. As I was sitting at my desk studying and listening to TOEFOP, I'm aiming for a doctorate in psychology soon mm -hmm. to join the ranks of doctors. Do we clap or wait till she actually gets it? Half a clap. Is that half a clap? Well, yeah. One clap. I've witnessed some bin antics. A guy has walked up the road and looked in the bins of the house across from me and then walked back where he came from mm. only to return 10 minutes later with a few bin bags and dump them in the bins. Okay, mm. so clearly his mm -hmm. bins are full. He's gone check the neighbor's bins and he's come back to do a drop mm. off. For the last two hours, this has happened every 10 minutes or so. <laughs> Shit, mm. it's like I think he's dumping a body. <laughs> who's, who's like doing two hours of bin dumping? Mm. To the point that he's completely filled up all those bins. He then walked across the road and dumped the remainder of his rubbish into my bin. I live in a five-person share house, so bin space is a precious commodity. 
Am I within my rights to yell up from the window if he returns again? Keeping in mind that tomorrow morning is bin collection. Hoping by the time you get to this, uh, it'll be up to date with the episodes. Cheers, Samantha. Um, all right. Well, this is interesting. So it's obviously bin night. The bins are out. I think in previous discussions, we said there's a certain kind of curfew for this. I feel like, yeah. And so bin- 9 p.m. <sighs> I think after 9 p.m. it's fair game. I think the cover of darkness. I think as soon yeah. as it gets dark, whatever time it gets dark, as, as long as you wait, wait for the cover of darkness, I think that anything happens after lights out is fine. Yeah, because you've got to account for the fact that some people will get home from work, mm. you know, six, years, six, seven-ish, yeah. probably have some dinner, and then the bins is the last thing they'll do before they retire for mm. the night. So I don't think you can – I mean, sundown, sure, but I think you need to wait a bit longer. You've got to wait till – I think it's 9 p.m. That's what I'm going to say before you but can if the bins aren't, bins. But like, if the bins aren't already out, in your scenario, this person – they're not a victim of this crime regardless because their bins aren't out. No, no, she's saying the bins are out. She said- uh, Well, if the bins are out, I, I I do think once the bins are out on the street, like on bin night, there is like, I mean, again, I think it's like courteous to wait until dark, you know, like I think it's polite, but I, I think it's kind of unnecessary. Once you've released the bin into the wild, like, and again, if it's bin night, I'm not talking about an empty bin. Like I don't think yeah. the next day you can't come along and find an empty bin that's on the street and go, it's on the street, I can put stuff in it. No way. But if if somebody said, this is my bin, it's done, I've put it out on the street. I do think there is some responsibility on the person putting it out on the street to make sure the bin is full before you put it out. Just just rereading this, I, don't th- I think this is during the day. I think mm. the bins are out during the day. Okay. Like someone's gone to work and they've taken their bin out. I mean, it is, guy yeah. is It's a block of flats, of right? Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. Well, she's talking about her entire yeah. street though. So I, th- I agree with Will. I think you've got to wait till the absolute last minute. How about this though? Just to give you a personal anecdote. So I live in a little cul-de-sac. There's only, I think, 10 houses in, in, on my street and I know pretty much all my neighbours and I know their bin habits now. Like I know Margot over the road, she puts her bin out early. Peter's bin comes out around this time. So I know their bin habits. I was doing a lot of gardening last week and I had overflow of greens. Mm -hmm. And so knowing their bins were out, I know that they're not going all the way back up their drive to bring more greens Mm -hmm. out. I went and spread my load. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I spread, spread my load amongst the bins. Yeah. Like I shook out, I took my lawnmower clippings and, and, and spread them around. I have, a, I have a pass in that instance, don't I? Because there is an established relationship. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that's fine. I think if you know the pattern, like, and again, I just think that most people in most places only put the bins out once they've decided that in a general sense they are done for, like, I mean – Otherwise, like, you know, you know you got heaps more rubbish. Normally you get you put all the rubbish in the bins first and then you wheel out the bin. The idea that the like I mean, yes, there might be an, like, you know, there might be a little late minute rubbish. Like something else that you're like, you know what, I'll go out and put it in the bin. And I think you should always I'm not a big fan of you topping up someone else's bin. I always think you should leave them a little wiggle room. So say, for example, that like, you know, there's a few like half empty bins on the street, put a bag in each of them. I get that. Like, so that there's still room if that person has a last minute bin emergency, they still have room in their own bin to add something else. Yeah. What if you saw someone like in your recycle Mm. bin jumping in it to squash down? Yeah. Like you put out a full bin Mm -hmm. and they squashed it down so they could put in, you know, they'll top it up with some bottles and cardboard and stuff. Yeah. Now, the assumption would be that you've put a full bin out, therefore you're done with uh-huh. it. Therefore, I can come in and squish it down and throw my bottles on yeah. top, right? Yeah. Would that be okay? Yeah, I'd be fine with that. I mean, as long as you're not okay. breaking my bin by jumping. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wrap it up there. Uh, before we do, uh, you can go to tofop.com to check out our other great podcast. I'll just remind you again, uh, Fofops will now be on Fridays. Fofop Friday, we're calling it. Um, just a part of the reshuffle we're doing with our corporate overlords. Um, but you can check out at Fofop on Fridays. Two Guys, One Cup is still coming out on Tuesdays on the listener app, and we do our tips on Thursday, so on Instagram and then also a mini podcast. But, Will, you're doing shows. Uh, Melbourne International Comedy Festival. When you hear this, I will still have a few shows left at the Comedy Theatre, so I'd love to see you at Will Illuminate. Uh, after that, Sydney Comedy Festival is the next one. Uh, so uh, tickets at the Enmore. There's still some tickets at the Enmore available. I'd love you to come to see that show. And then uh, Brisbane Comedy Festival, Perth. 
uh, Townsville, I think, Sutherland Shire. Anyway, there's more dates being added, so comedy.com.au if you want to um, uh, come and see me live. You can see highlights of the show at YouTube, Tofop TV on YouTube, and you can go to patreon.com to see the full video and also hear bonus content, new episodes going up every fortnight. I'm Charlie Clawson. I'm Alanderson. 